So I'm sure most of you are sitting very comfortably in your seat, so I won't disturb you by asking you to raise your hands up to a couple of questions. But I am going to ask you to reflect. When you use social media today, did you think? Did you think deeply, critically, reflectively, analytically at what you were being exposed to? Did you question the thoughts, the opinions, the biases that you were being shown? Or did you just sit back, scroll through, and not think at all? Fact is, I'm sure a lot of you here know that critical thinking is very important when using social media and have been told that throughout your lives. But what often goes unrecognized is the sheer magnitude of the pandemic that is unthoughtful consumption of social media. Because when somebody tells you that global warming threatens to submerge the largest cities of our planet, when somebody tells you that there are over 100 million youths worldwide who should be going to school like you and me, who are instead illiterate, thinking critically while using social media seems like an overshadowed problem. But the fact is, not doing so, not thinking critically, has divisive effects on society and can radically alter a person's identity. And to prove this point, I will focus my TEDx on just one small aspect of social media, to instill the sense of urgency, the sense of alarm that you should be feeling at hearing about this topic. I will, I will focus my TEDx on social media sorting algorithms and radicalism. I'm sure there are some of you out there who are questioning, sorting algorithms? What are those? Most social media platforms today have an unfathomably large database of information from which they can only show you a tiny sliver. Therefore, they must use automated sorting algorithms to look through all of that content and then show you what will most improve your experience on that platform. But the fact is, since we're considering so many different sorting algorithms and so many different platforms, it gets a little hard to prove a point. So I'll focus on just one platform for now and branch out from there, YouTube. I'm sure many of you know that YouTube's search results, recommended videos, and homepage are all sorted by the same sorting algorithm. This algorithm takes a look at a user's search, comment, like, and watch history, the playlists they've created, and the channels they've subscribed to, to sort through all of the content and then show them what will most improve their experience. Now, this is great, because if you're a student that likes watching MasterChef more than actually doing their homework, then when you type in chicken into the search box of YouTube, you'll get a bunch of recipes of chicken instead of videos of some live chicken running around in somebody's front yard. On the surface, that seems great, because it improves your viewing experience by a large amount. But last December, I read an article published by The Independent UK stating that the Home Affairs Committee of the UK Parliament said that sorting algorithms in social media were causing radicalism. I want you to think about that for a second. Radicalism. Radicalism is a word we often tie up with terrorists, with individuals who go to ISIS and Al-Qaeda. How can something so strong, a word so powerful, be associated with something that we're all exposed to? every day? That's a question I had. And to answer that, I held an experiment, an experiment at home, something that could be done in five minutes by not just me, but all of you, something that shows really how powerful these are, these sorting algorithms, on an individual basis. I made a new Google account with no search history, no watch history, nothing that can really affect the sorting algorithm. And then I typed into the YouTube search box one word, communism. I wasn't looking for anything in particular, but what did catch my eye was the fourth result from the top, a bloody history of communism. This was clearly a documentary that was against this sociopolitical ideal. To test just how powerful the sorting algorithm was, I then went ahead and watched three different videos on why communism was a great doctrine and why everybody should apply it to their countries. I then went back to this. I searched up communism once again into the YouTube search box, and here are the results. It's a bit difficult to tell, but that video is now 13th from the top. The YouTube sorting algorithm made it so that I had to scroll through 12 different videos before finding that one. Now, that is alarming. That is the problem. Because in an effort to show you videos that you'd like, in an effort to make your experience on YouTube more enjoyable, YouTube offers videos that show the same opinions 
that affirm what you already have, the biases, the thoughts that you already think. That is the pandemic that I described earlier. Because the first video you watch establishes a viewpoint, an opinion in your mind, and you're questioning it. You're asking, is this really true? Because you've learned from somewhere that never use just one source when learning something. But then you go to the second video. Because of YouTube's sorting algorithm, that video says the same thing once again. You're thinking, OK, perhaps what I've been shown here might, be, might have some basis to it. Third video affirms that once again. Fourth video affirms that once again. And once you've done a bunch of research, once you've looked through YouTube and various other websites, you start thinking that these opinions, these biases, are not only well accepted, but well founded, and sometimes even true. And when these opinions become true in your mind, when these opinions change into facts, that's when you become what the UK Parliament's Home Affairs Committee describes as a radical. But that's just YouTube. Take a look at Facebook. Facebook's another one of the very large social media companies that many of us have used or use today. This platform also uses a sorting algorithm that looks through your interactions with all of the content creators on the website and the likelihood that you will respond positively to anything it shows you to sort through everything and give you content that will make your experience enjoyable. Instagram is a company owned by Facebook, and so it uses a very similar sorting algorithm, except it also takes into account your messaging history, which makes it that much more accurate. Twitter, LinkedIn, even Pinterest all have similar sorting algorithms, sorting algorithms that have the ability to indirectly make your opinions, your thoughts, your biases unbalanced, that have the ability to make your worldview unbalanced, that have the ability to make you radicalized. At the beginning of this presentation, I described this issue as a pandemic. Now, a pandemic is generally accepted as a disease that has spread from not only one area, but multiple areas all around the world. And I use that word very intentionally. At the beginning of this presentation, I asked you all, when you use social media today, did you think? I didn't ask you, have you used social media today? Or when was the last time you used social media? I simply made the assumption that you have used social media today. And for more than the majority of you, I am most likely correct. But it's not just the wealthy few here at CIS or Singapore who are being affected by social media daily. A report came out by the groups We Are Social and Hootsuite in January earlier this year that showed some interesting statistics regarding social media usage worldwide. Look at that middle number. In January 2018, 3.196 billion people worldwide use social media actively across all platforms. That is over three-sevenths of the world population, susceptible to radicalism because of these sorting algorithms. But also note that that's a 42% increase from 2017, January. That means that today, in September 2018, that number is no longer 3.2 billion. That number is higher than that could have risen to half of the world's population, or even more than that. I want you to think, if that much of the world's population is affected by these sorting algorithms in social media that they use actively every day, what effects that can have on society? How it can make them extremists, make them radical? How it can change their viewpoint on the entire world? But I ask you to think about the future. Thing is, these have already had an effect today. In 2017, the Pew Research Center, this was last year, conducted a study in the US where they asked individuals from both sides of the political spectrum, both Democrats and Republicans, whether they agree or disagree on a series of different statements. These statements include things like, the best way to ensure peace is through military strength. Blacks in this country can't get ahead and who are, are mostly responsible for their own condition. And poor people have it easy because they can get government benefits without doing anything in return. What's alarming is not these phrases. What's alarming are those graphs, because those graphs show agreement and disagreement to those phrases. And those red and blue lines represent Republicans and Democrats, respectively. If you look at them, all of them are diverging over the course of the past few years. This shows that people on both sides of the spectrum are more radical. Their thoughts are they're more closed-minded. They're less willing to accept the opinions of another side of the political spectrum. 
Take a look at this graph from the same study. This graph is more direct in that same message. It shows how likely people are from both sides of the political spectrum to consider the opinions, the viewpoints, the biases of the other side. Not accept, but just consider. In 1994 and 2004, most people are clustered around the middle. They are willing, absolutely willing, to think about what the other people are saying. But then look at 2017. Most of the people have distributed to the sides. That pyramid is no longer there. This data correlates exactly with an increase in proliferation of social media worldwide. It shows that these algorithms are causing changes in people's viewpoints, people's open-mindedness, and are radicalizing them through their sorting algorithms. But it's not just extreme cases that this data shows, because this data shows that there are people all around. They're not just people on both sides, they're people in the middle or in the middle of the middle. And the fact is, this shows that it's not just the people who become terrorists that you read on the news, people who go and join ISIS, people who join Al-Qaeda. It's all of us that can be affected by this, not just becoming terrorists, but becoming closed-minded, not accepting the opinions of others, not considering other viewpoints. That is dangerous, and that is alarming. But I know what some of you are thinking. Just because two pieces of data match up doesn't mean that one causes the other. Take a look at this study, Echo Chambers in an Age of Misinformation. This study asked that same question in 2015. Does correlation between an increase in social media usage and an increase in radicalism really mean that this social media usage is affecting radicalism? And this study answered that question with one precise sentence. Despite enthusiastic claims that social media is generating a vast collective intelligence available to all, many mechanisms cause false information to gain acceptance, which, once adopted by an individual, are highly resistant to correction. I want you to fill in the blanks. These many mechanisms? Sorting algorithms. These false beliefs? The opinion that these biases you're seeing in social media are actually true. This shows that sorting algorithms in social media are causing radicalism. This shows that all of that data that you have previously seen is, is directly causes one another. This shows that these sorting media algorithms, this social media algorithms, if not dealt with correctly, can result in closed-mindedness in all of us. So what's the solution? How do we solve this? The solution has been the same from the beginning. Critical thinking. That hasn't changed over the course of the presentation, and it never will. But what the purpose of this TEDx was, was to demonstrate the problem. Because if we don't know a problem, we won't ever be incentivized to put in the effort to try and solve said problem. The goal of my TEDx was to demonstrate just how effectively social media sorting algorithms can cause radicalism. Was to demonstrate that by using social media, we're not standing here in the safety of some red circle. We're not standing here, we're not standing here, we're not standing here. We're standing right here, at the edge of the pit of radicalism. Lean forward too much, and you might fall down. But the fact is, this is a problem I cannot solve for you. It's something that you must solve for yourself, because it's an internal problem. It's a choice you choose to think or not. But I highly urge you, I highly urge all of you to think very carefully when using social media. Because if you don't, one morning you might wake up an extremist, a radical, a terrorist even. And the scariest part is, you won't even realize it. Thank you.